Good evening and welcome to the linkage of Pope John the 23rd and Christ the King Parishes. Our presider and homilist is Father Zach Miller. I, Amy Stevens, am your commentator, and John Finn and Joey Jean DeBlaze will be reading. Here are a few important announcements. Ticket sales for the April 27th lasagna dinner will be on sale after all masses in the vestibule. We will have coffee and donuts after the 10.30 a.m. mass tomorrow. Confessions will be held on Monday from 4.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. at Christ the King. Join us this Monday through Wednesday for three nights of healing with Father Zach, titled, What Are You Seeking in Healing? Forever Young will meet on Tuesday at 11 a.m. at Pope John's. The Backpack Ministry will be preparing for the April break. Items needed can be found in the bulletin and can be left in the designated boxes in the church. We are hiring for a new faith formation coordinator in anticipation of Tony Mayo's retirement in June. For more information, please see the position description on the website. Please see the bulletin for more details on all events. Please stand as we sing the opening hymn, this day was made by the Lord, number 574. My brothers and sisters, we gather ourselves this evening praying for ourselves, praying for peace in our world and peace in the Middle East and in other parts of the world. We sign ourselves in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. My brothers and sisters, we come here to renew our trust in Christ, that we may share that trust with another today. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners back to you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you constantly feed us in word and sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Yeah. 
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence, when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and ask that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. No, now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My, my children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit, but if, wait a minute, that's right. So that you may not commit sin, but if anyone does sin, you, we, have my, we have an advocate with the Father. Just Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiration for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him 
is to keep him, keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in, in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly per perfectly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. And then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do you questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that is, I say myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incurious for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of the Moses and in the prophets and psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations. In the beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Peace be with you. I heard the response. Four o'clock was a little more boisterous. 
Why are you troubled? Jesus starts with today the, with that familiar welcome in after his resurrection, peace be with you. And he immediately follows it. Why are you troubled? For the disciples that are in this moment of fear and trembling, that when we hear that response from Jesus, as we hear his voice say, peace, at times in our lives, it's in that message that we can hear and feel a moment of fear, a moment of trembling, a, a moment of, of anxiety. Or it's also that we can hear in that moment comfort, joy, and, and peace. But it's in the scriptures that today is we embark this weekend for a three-day journey on what are you seeking in healing? It's this very message that is so true and strong of coming to a deeper understanding of what healing is in and through our lives and in the church and in our world. It's so often brought to misconceptions and misunderstandings, and this does not help at all. As you can find just about any answer on Google that's true and not helpful. But it's in this question that Jesus provides to us, it's in this question of the church that we ask in healing is that in that title is what is going to be our theme song of this three-day mission and retreat. I heard the voice of Jesus say, and the voice of Jesus says to us, peace. Each day, the voice Jesus, of Jesus may say into a different moment, into a different place of our lives, something completely different. But then it's in this moment he looks and provides a moment of healing for the disciples and apostles and asks, why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts that Jesus already understands what they need? And it's in and through their lives that they have to then reach out and understand the great power, the great joy, the great healing that comes at the hands of Jesus. And I think that's where our journey truly, really starts, is in the understanding then of what do we understand in prayer? And how do we pray? And the different ways we pray. And often when I visit someone who has been sick for a long time, or someone who might have a debilitating illness, especially people who suffer from Alzheimer's, that you might go and start to have a conversation and it may make no sense, but you start to pray with them. You start to say the Our Father or the Hail Mary and immediately they chime in. Someone who may have been away from the church for 20, 30, 40 years, it's something about how some of those basic prayers we learn in our childhood get ingrained, inscribed into us so that when we are in those troublesome moments, it's what we can cling to and hold so closely to our hearts and to our spirit. It's Cardinal Bernadine that once said, we teach you to pray when you are well because it is so much harder to teach when you're sick. 
And I think anyone that has suffered from a debilitating illness or someone who has been sick, either physically, spiritually, or emotionally, understands this, that at times it becomes a chore just to see those things that we have done so easily in our lives. And it was in the midst of COVID, my sister called me one day and asked me to pray for her and her employees. She's a hospital administrator. And she asked me just to offer a prayer. I said, I will if, are you praying? And are you praying for them? And she stopped. And she said, no. And I think there's the beginning. That if we ask someone of a prayer from us, it's in that moment of healing to entrust ourselves into the prayer of Jesus that we can offer those prayers too. Because it's on a daily or a weekly basis that I get asked that question, you know, would you pray for me 14, 15, 20 times a day? And I, I often respond, would you pray too? And it's this talk that we're embarking upon that I started about a year ago when I realized that people struggle in their prayer and they have a misconception about what as a church we believe is healing what we understand is sickness and what we understand in suffering. And it's in that moment of prayer that we have to take warning. It's also with this that I know for at least I've gotten them. I know many probably have. If you pray this seven times a day for the next seven days, this will happen. You chuckle, we all get them. And then it doesn't happen. The prayer request or what we asked of God doesn't happen. And what do we do? We get angry. We get upset. We say, God didn't provide for me. But the whole understanding of prayer is not necessary for what we're asking of God, but it's to in enter into the journey, to enter into the moment with the person who is ill, or into the moment in our lives that we know that then we can start to walk with Jesus. Because if we promote and say, if you pray this, this will happen, and it doesn't happen, we did the one thing that we should never do. We didn't give hope. But every moment of prayer should be a moment of hope and a moment of encouragement and a moment of entering into relationship. And that's the question I really think we should ask ourselves. It is about our own communities and about the church that do we see ourselves as a people of healing? And if we find it hard to see ourselves as people that are in need of healing or are walking along the journey of healing, then how much harder is it for someone from the outside to see us as a place of healing and a refuge? that it's a great question that I think even in the Synod should be brought up. That as we look into Scripture in the next three days, we'll be on Monday looking at those definitions, we'll be looking at Scripture in moments of Jesus' physical healing in his life, that of people reaching out, reaching through the crowds just to grasp a chance to see Jesus, so that we do too. And we experience what he provides. Hope. And it's in that hope that the healing may not happen in the way that we asked of it. But so often there's a deeper healing 
from a physical request of a spiritual or emotional healing. And it's so often that that's then we journey with people into their moment. Then we journey and accompany them into the understanding of their lives. And so I'd like to end with this. Whenever we pray for someone's healing, we simply entrust them into the loving care of Jesus and ask for healing. Because we know in general that health and wholesome is good for God's children. But we trust that he knows what is best for each person at each moment along their journey. My guess is that our hearts are really open to the Holy Spirit. We would find that it is Christ's loving plan to heal broken bodies, wounded emotions, far more often than we think. And after all, during this journey on earth, he healed people more often then he left them carrying their own cross of illness because he often found moments to provide a deeper spiritual healing and one to have them to enter into a joy of relationship with him. But in every case, his merciful love for us, he knows what is best in each situation. We just need to take a moment and to listen to the voice of Jesus say, Peace be with you. For those who are on the practical side, that you're wondering, well, how long will this take? Monday, 6 to 7 p.m. And trust me, for those who know me, I, I'm very true to my word. We'll be done by 7. Tuesday and Wednesday, Tuesday will be a Mass for healing, and that will be starting at 6 p.m., and then probably going just a little bit past 7. And then on Wednesday, we're going to take a, a moment to reflect upon what is mystagogy in our church or for those who enter as adults into the Catholic faith, the Christian faith. It's the understanding of taking moments in our lives to reflect upon the mysteries of God, or where God has been with us in these days of healing. So I invite you to join us Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, starting at 6 p.m. at Christ the King. And if you're just experiencing just reach out to Jesus or just to follow your heart to join us. My brothers and sisters, we stand and profess our faith in saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Entrusting ourselves into a moment with Jesus, that we reach out with him with our prayers and petitions for ourselves and for our world. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, 
that the Spirit will open our minds to understand the scriptures and empower us to share the message of God's love and forgiveness with all whom we encounter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of Congress, that God will guide their deliberations and help them to find ways to act upon the critical issues confronting our nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all children who are receiving First Communion this spring, that they will experience God's love for them and God's care and protection each day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are broken and wounded, that they will find healing in Christ and that God will help us recognize them as our brothers and sisters through the wounded Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of stewardship, that we may make wise use of the resources of the earth and protect the soil, air, and water for future generations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parish communities of Christ the King, Epiphany, and Pope John XXIII, as, as our faith communities change and grow, may we remember that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever and that God's loving care is never ending. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, for Mary Moscato, aunt of Carol McCarthy, and for these mass intentions of the people of Pope John XXIII and Christ the King Parishes, for the members of Pope John XXIII and Christ the King Parishes, Stephen Bowman, Earl and Catherine Boyle, the living intention of Catherine Irwin, Patricia Kusek, Brian McLaughlin, Jay Myers, James and Penny O'Neill, and William Pancha. May the, those living and deceased find the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions in our parish book of prayers, and for the intentions we hold in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, our God, it is in the disciples recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread and in the proclamation of Scripture that so too we may heal through him and may our world find peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of us to the praise and glory of his name for our good and Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also the gifts we bring, bearing fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exults in your praise. May even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as it awaits the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
I now invite Marina to please come forward. She would like to share with the communities of Christ the King and Pope John's a, a thank you from our Lenten drive and the generosity that our communities have shown in, in both in charity and in prayer. Good evening. I'm very happy to be here with you again. Uh, you met me in February, and I have to tell you that uh, uh, when I first entered this church, I immediately fell in love. But I fell in love uh, with this beautiful building. But now I have to tell you that I do love you, each of you. And I am deeply grateful for this amazing job that you've done, uh, helping Ukrainians, com uh, Ukrainian community, uh, because uh, you know what's going on there. Uh, life is very tough, and um, uh, terrorists, they are bombing uh, cities, towns, and destroying villages. Uh, every day, hundreds of people dying and suffering, and uh, we have a group of volunteers uh, who are helping, and uh, we ship boxes with food and clothes, uh, but what you've done, it's impressive. Because when Sister uh, Laura, she invited me and she said, Marina, our church, there are so many good people, they're generous people, and they will help you. I have to admit, uh, in my heart, I didn't believe. I didn't believe and I didn't realize how generous you are. Uh, and I'm deeply grateful for $6,160 that you collected and you donated to support Ukraine, and also uh, for uh, the whole trailer of food and clothes uh, that we already started uh, with our team uh, sorting. And uh, this month, uh, we ship boxes every, like, every first week of the month. And we shipped 22 large boxes that are already on the way to support Ukrainians. And I'm deeply grateful. This is amazing. And uh, I have to tell you that uh, I'm praying and my desire uh, that I will never become deaf or blind to see needs of people because uh, there are so many needs and uh, I do believe that God is touching our hearts and he is speaking if you can help. Do possible and God will do impossible things and uh, there is no little things. You know, you can donate one package of cookies and it may make a uh, child in Ukraine smile. It will make difference. So thank you again for your generosity. And uh, our team, we prepared a small, a small list of items you can still donate if you have desire. There is my contact information and uh, Tony Catalfino, our team is here. I'm very grateful for their support because I, I couldn't be able to do this alone. And I have to tell you, all of you, uh, you are our friends and uh, it was very good team work. So I'm proud of you. May God bless you. From the bottom of my heart, I want to express my deep gratitude. You did well. To me, you are superheroes. And uh, um, also, I want to, to say that uh, I have one hobby. I enjoy playing the piano. Maybe I'm not professional, but I do it with my heart. And uh, tonight, I decided I'll keep just you for two more minutes, maybe. And uh, I want to sing a song in Ukrainian language because you support Ukrainian, so I thought you might be interested to listen to Ukrainian song. Uh, but probably you won't be able to understand the lyrics because you don't know Ukrainian. That's why uh, I will just interpret for you the meaning of these words. Uh, I just want to express you thank you. Thank you that you are always with me. You are sunshine, you are the light. When I am in the darkness, you give me the light, and when I am thirsty, when I am in the wilderness, you are my living water. You are always here with me. Uh, when I am weak, you are my strength, you are my fortress. When I am in the slavery, you are my freedom, and I need you forever. Uh, this is a song uh, about God, that he is our living water, and that he is our strength, and he is our fortress. But I decided to sing this song um, to you in this church uh, because um, you 
you blessed Ukrainians, you helped them when they were thirsty. Right now, you gave them water. When they were hungry, you sent them food. And uh, I will be forever grateful for what you've done. Thank you again, and uh, may God's favor and peace be upon each of you. Thank you again. God bless you. Просто тобі хочу сказати дякую за те, що ти зі мною назавжди дякую. Ти сонце, ти світло, коли я ті, ти вода. Коли я справа, коли я в пустелі, і ти, ти мені так потрібен завжди. Я просто тобі хочу сказати дякую за те, що ти Зі мною назавжди дякую. Ти сила фортеця, коли я слабкість. Ти воля і свобода, коли я в полоні. І ти, ти мені так потрібна. Я просто тобі хочу сказати дякую За те, що ти зі мною назавжди дякую Я просто тобі хочу сказати дякую за те, що ти зі мною назавжди, дякую, я дякую тобі. Thank you so much. And I, I forgot to tell you, maybe I'm not allowed to talk more. No, take away microphone, but uh, I really want to hug each of you from because I do love you. So I will be standing there after the service and if you want to hug me, I'm here for you and I will give you the list of items you can continue donating. Thank you. Marina, thank you for everything that you have done and your thank you today and for how you're supporting the people of Ukraine and there for the efforts that are trying to bring, bring to being for peace, just not in Ukraine, but throughout our world, and to your family that is joining us here today, and to all those part of your ministry, thank you, and you have our continued prayers, and you have our continued thoughts with you, and our final blessing will be for the people of Ukraine, for our own communities, and for that healing within our own world. Also, a reminder that Mike Holly is in the front vestibule selling lasagna dinner tickets that's uh, upcoming in a few weeks, and you can look for him at the red table out there. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries maintain in their flesh 
the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Please bow your heads for God's blessing. Lord Jesus, we thank you for sharing with us your wonderful ministry of healing and deliverance. We thank you for the healing that we have seen and experienced today, but we realize that the sickness and evil we encounter are more than our humanities can bear. So cleanse us of any sadness, negativity, or despair that we may have picked up during this course of this ministry. If our ministry has tempted us to anger, impatience, or cleanse us of those temptations and replace them with love, joy, and peace. If evil spirits have attacked ourselves in any way, we ask you to bring them to cease. May the Holy Spirit now be with us and allow us to go to straight to Jesus to deal with us as he wills. Come, Holy Spirit, renew us. Fill us anew with your power, love, and joy. Strengthen us that we have felt weak and clothe us with your light. Fill us with life, and Lord Jesus, please send your holy angels to minister to us and our families, to guard us and protect us from all sickness, harm, and accidents, and guard us on a safe trip home, and grant us a peaceful night's rest. We praise you now and forever, and blessing all may God be upon you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.